talking about. It's almost November. That obviously means the start of the high school basketball season, the college basketball season. And with that, we're going to uh, welcome head coach Kevin Lubbers, Southeastern University's men's basketball coach. And coach, welcome yeah. to Sports Central. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Third season. Yeah, it's that time of year again. <laughs> it, it, well, it, I think because I was asking before we came on, I was trying to remember what year this was going to be in and three, but it really seems like one because yeah. the last, I think for everybody, the last 18, 19 months are just yeah. very compressed. Yeah, yeah, so the first year we had a lot of fun, had a lot of success on the court uh, and had a great year. And then, yeah, you know, we're sitting at the national tournament end of the year and didn't even get a chance to play. Got sent home before we got yeah, to play Yeah, you were told first before you game. even got to play, right? Yeah, so we were sitting there in the hotel ready to go and you know, you see the NBA cancel, and then they start limiting fans. They said no fans, and then hey, you guys need to find flights and go home. So that was that was tough, right? And it led into the next year, which really sure. is probably a year to forget for <laughs> for most of us in sports. You right. know, so, but yeah. Yeah, but talk before, in, and I think we're all getting to the point where okay, we're we're seeing some normalcy, getting yeah. back to some normalcy. But just a quick look back, real quick, what was it like? Because I know. Mm -hmm. Uh, similar, the baseball team at Southeastern mm -hmm. was poised to make a yeah. was a national title run. Yeah. Uh, we talked about how they won it in 18. But yeah. for you and all the hours, you know, a lot of fans yeah. don't see the hours that not only the coaches but the student athletes put mm -hmm. in. What was that moment like when you're like, we're done? Yeah, you know, as a, as a coach, right, I, I can sit there and say I know that unless something crazy happens, I, I get to do this again. Right. Right, but we had a handful of guys that that was their last yeah. chance, you know, uh, a couple seniors in particular, and so you sit there and and um, you know you're you're just hurting for them, right? You have empathy towards you know like oh that's how it ended, you know. But um, we had some unbelievable leadership that year. Um, one player in particular, Jeremy Oppenheimer, I remember him sitting there and just. Um, you know, all he wanted to do after that moment was just spend time with the guys, right? Mm -hmm. Dive back into those relationships, go hang in the hotel room, play some video games, tell old memories. Uh, and, you know, and their last memory for us, thankfully, was cutting down the nets in the conference tournament championship right. game at home. So they, they really had a fun memory to end on with a little bit of a, uh, obviously, an empty feeling at the end. But uh, also from a coaching side, you just look at it, and it's an opportunity to talk about how fragile just everybody's experiences, right? Uh, you never know when something's going to come to an end. And so just engage in each opportunity in a meaningful and purposeful way so that you're uh, really getting the most out of your experience. So, but, but yeah, it was a tricky, tricky time. I mean, I hope I never have to <laughs> be right. in that situation again. But right. um, you just mostly in those moments, you just, like a lot of moments, you think about the players and their experience and try to meet them where they're at and help them, help them learn some lessons and walk through that. Wonderful. Um, before we dive into this upcoming season, something I always like to kind of get a feedback on. I know you were a Midwest guy out from the Midwest. Mm -hmm. What has um, what it brought you to Southeastern and, and more particularly Lakeland? What, what drew you to, uh, to coming here to, to Southeastern and moving your family and, and yeah. starting? Yeah. Um, well, I was looking for an environment where I felt like there was a, a strong commitment to athletics, right? And, and Southeastern, I think, puts that on display both through their their track record with, with other teams, but also through from a resource commitment standpoint and those types of things. So it was attractive from that aspect. I really don't like the cold ever since my hair started going. <laughs> I, I prefer warm weather. So that, that part was uh, something that I was uh, you know, excited about as well. And you know, you walk a campus as a coach and you, and you go, can I, can I recruit here, right? Can I get excited about this personally? And do I feel like I can get kids excited about uh, being here? And so. Uh, for me, that was that was another thing that I looked at. Um, you know, leadership. Uh, Dr. Engel, Dr. Owen, Drew Watson. All those folks are really committed to athletics and create an environment where you can do your job and do it well. And so, you know, those were some of the things for me that factored into to why I was able to be excited about coming to Southeastern. I actually heard about it through Coach Hayes, who's our women's coach, who's done a great job down here, and uh, he had coached with me at another university out in Colorado. And so when the job opened up, he's the one that sort of made me aware of it and connected me with, with Drew, and here I am today. So, Wonderful. so obviously relationships are important. Uh, the resources resources are important. Uh, lessons learned throughout the career, and certainly mm -hmm. there were some lessons learned with mm -hmm. COVID and, and the shutdown. All that, 
How's it go into eight new players on a roster yeah. this year? Five freshmen <laughs> and three transfers. Yeah. It's a yeah. lot to manage. It is, yeah. <laughs> we got a, a, a lot of new faces this year, uh, which is exciting, right? But it's also, like you said, it's a lot to manage. And, you know, it's interesting. We do have this divide of a lot of really seasoned up. I mean, they're older college guys. Our starting lineup will probably be mostly guys that are 23, 24 years old. Mm -hmm. But then the other half of our roster is 18, you know, 18 and a half years old. And, and is still trying to figure things out. So, yeah, we, we have a really fun group. I mean, at the end of the day, we have great leadership uh, on our team. Um, you know, Devin Ford, Riley Minix, uh, who's, who's entering his third season with us. His, he got cut short last year due to injury, but I think he's one of the better players in the country, let alone this area at our level. Mm -hmm. And then Riley Maddox. So we have three really strong captains, great leaders. Um, the transfers that we added in are all guys who uh, fit in really well to who we are and how we play, uh, and they've been playing college basketball before, right? So they, they pick up schemes pretty fast, and mm -hmm. they've all acclimated well. And then our freshmen that are coming in, I, I think several of them have really high ceilings, and it just takes time for them to, to really develop and blossom. But I think the, the core of who we are and what we're about um, is, is really consistent throughout kids that are returning and also some of our new recruits. Speaking of speaking of Devin Ford, obviously we have on the next segment. Um, you know, he was the Sun Conference champion of character. Mm -hmm. um, so, what's it mean to have someone like that um, who can be a leader, uh, who can be looked at as character on mm -hmm. your team, and um, and lead from example? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just a huge blessing to me as a coach. And over the years, I've had a handful of guys that that I think. Um, just really represent who we are and what we're about as a program and Devin certainly is um, at or near the front of that line for me over the I've been in this now for 16 17 years in college coaching and and he's at or near the front of the line there in terms of just who he is as a person what he brings to the table from a leadership standpoint he has you'll you guys will experience he has a great charisma to him a great way about him he's an excellent student comes from a great family uh, does his business in the classroom, but also engages in the lives of the people around him on campus uh, and in our community. So try hard to recruit guys that, you know, I got two daughters at home, and so I try hard to recruit guys that I'd be cool if they married my daughters, right? <laughs> I'd be excited about it. Uh, and Devin, I mean, he's one of those guys, right? If, if my daughter brought someone like him home and said, hey, Dad, this is, this is the guy for me, I'd be, I'd be through the moon excited. So I think it's just that. It's all the stuff away from basketball. I think he's a really good player, too. Um, but that's somewhat of an afterthought when you, once you get to know him and you think about all the other areas that he you know, that makes your program better. So he makes me look like a pretty good coach. <laughs> <laughs> so I hear he's checking multiple boxes. Yeah, but at yeah, the yeah. End, that, that, yeah. yeah. Um, locker room campaign, what, yeah. what is that? And uh, tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, it's been fun. It's just kind of a... You know, as with any athletic facility, over time it gets to a point where it's you look at it and you go, I think we ought to upgrade this, or you can compare it to living room at your house, right? Eventually right. you walk in there and say it's time to, to turn this thing over. And so we looked at that space and, and just created a vision for, for what could happen in there and then developed a, a campaign around it. And really the project's going great. There's dust flying right now. They're putting in new lockers this week, so we've gotten a tremendous support financially from the community and, and boosters and donors and alumni who've gotten behind that project, a um, couple businesses in the area as well. And so it's been a really fun project. Our guys were involved in, in some of the fundraising for that. So we've really uh, been able to, to create a space that's going to be exciting, um, you know, for our players, but also just for, for the athletic department in general as a space people can use. Well, we were talking in the last segment, you know, facility operations, things like that, but in college sports and really it's even in the high school now it's an arms race yeah and so i'm i'm assuming that it's important for your program and other programs to have a draw like the football program is mm -hmm. uh and that helps with recruiting and helps with oh, your yeah. experience to sell the university like you said right yeah absolutely so I, I look at facilities never hurt right so when you're walking a recruiter on campus our school is beautiful mm -hmm. they put a ton into the infrastructure into athletics and so uh, you know, we got a lot to talk about when we walk a recruiter on campus, but um, now we also have something to talk about in, you know, inside of our basketball facility, we can really point to and say, hey, this is, this is a world-class state-of-the-art room right. for men's basketball and a great opportunity for, for you to be a part of it. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a great space for us on that front, too. 
Uh, we try to recruit kids that aren't too wowed by brand new drywall. <laughs> you know, the kids, that, <laughs> the kids that are more excited about the culture and the relationships and the program. And then that's why I say, I mean, it's, it doesn't hurt to also have state-of-the-art facilities. And certainly, if you look at the top teams in the country in men's basketball, right. uh, that's a piece of the puzzle there at most of those places. So we want to make sure that um, we're a premier program in the country, and that's an ingredient that needs to be there. So we, we found some creative ways to get it done. Well, we're running short on time. Uh, I know Jared mm -hmm. likes to ask this, or if not, I do. But uh, any predictions for the season? We love to ask coaches this because then they dance around <laughs> it. Yeah, they dance all around it, <laughs> right? Uh, I'm going to go with a very simple answer. we got, we got uh, 28 games, and my expectation is we're going to win 28 games. Right? I'm not going to dance around it. So uh, <laughs> I think if I thought anything else, we should just stay home and not go play. So I believe in our group. Uh, I think we got a, a high ceiling. Uh, got a chance to, to win them all, but whether we come out and execute or not, we're, we're going to find out. But, uh, you know, I got a lot of confidence in our group. Um, and like I said, if I didn't think we were going to win, we shouldn't go play. I see the season opener is November 5th. So, Gerald, we need to check November 6th to uh, see what, how yeah, it went. Yeah, see then, how we're uh, doing. Check, right, them, yeah, yeah. check them each check off. Them right? Off, right? <laughs> so keep the string alive. Coach, thanks so much. We really appreciate yeah, the time yeah, and good luck this season. Thanks and, for having uh, me on. Hopefully thanks we can have you on again soon. Yeah.